One of the reasons that Drupal is so popular is its extensibility. There are thousands of add-on modules and themes for Drupal. In this video, we're going to show you how to tap into this power by looking at how you find and install these add-ons. The Drupal project is a giant duocracy that rewards execution from people based on their talents and initiatives. The project is balanced into two branches, Core and Contrib, each with their own style of governance. Core is all the files that you get with the main download of Drupal. More than a thousand people have contributed to Core through code, patches, tests, and various other artifacts. However, for something to make it into the main package, they must be approved by a small number of maintainers. In this way, Core is fairly controlled. No significant feature changes happen from one major release to another, just bug fixes and maybe some minor tweaks. Contrib is another story. This is where anyone can potentially contribute their concepts to the project. Thousands of developers have written thousands of modules, themes, installation profiles, and translations. Drupal is really a competition of ideas. People have thoughts on how to make Drupal better and write those concepts into projects like modules. There's a saying in the Drupal community, there's a module for that. What is great about Drupal is that if you have a need for something on your website, the odds are that somebody else has had the same need. And if there's a common set of needs, most likely someone's written a module to help out. One of the challenges of Drupal is not, does the functionality exist, but that things can often be done multiple different ways, often manifesting themselves in multiple similar modules. Then it is left to the site builder to understand the nuances and select the best way. The good thing is that there's some indicators to help you select the best modules. Over time also, the community tends to converge on a collective, this is the best way to do something. So over time, the best ideas tend to bubble to the top. And if any of those ideas become central to Drupal, they might even get into a future version of Core. Much of the differences between Drupal 7 and Drupal 6 are that some of the best contributed modules have been moved into Core in Drupal 7. To review the modules currently uploaded to our site, we can go to the Modules link on our toolbar. And what we're seeing here is a list of modules whose files reside in our site's directories. We can also add to this list by saving additional module files within our installation. Since this is a fresh install, the only modules in here are the ones from Core. To enable and disable modules, we use these checkboxes. Notice that the default installation does not enable all modules. Also notice that there's these helper links that give us quick access to related settings and helpful information. To search for additional modules to install, simply go to drupal.org. Once there, you can click on Download and Extend. These four links over here give us access to Drupal's contrib projects. Modules are things that extend the functionality of Drupal. Themes set the look of the website. Translations allow you to do work in different languages and installation profiles are really sort of a preset Drupal in a box for different styles of websites. Right now we want to look at modules, so let's go ahead and click on those. What we're seeing here is a list of modules sorted by usage. Views is the most used contrib module, and so forth down the page. Drupal also gives us some tools to help us find modules, this search box, and several filters. But much of the time you already know what module you want, either from experience, or talking to other developers, looking at case studies, reading blogs, or even watching tutorials. One of the modules that I like to use in all of my sites is the Backup and Migrate module. So to find it, I'm going to go ahead and search for it. I click Search, and now I can scroll down my page. We see it's the second module in our list. Now I'm just going to click through to the Project page. The Project page tells us a lot about this module. There is, of course, the description, but there are several other key pieces of data we should look at. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the Downloads area. Here we'll see that we have a stable release for Drupal 7. That's good. Sometimes you'll see release candidates, beta, or even alpha statuses. And while generally release candidate and beta statuses are fairly stable, it's still good that this isn't a standard release status. The other thing to note is that this has been around since Drupal 5. That's some longevity. If we look above the downloads area, we'll see this project information. The first thing we want to look at is this development status. It's under active development. That's a check here. The next thing we'll notice is that the maintenance status is unknown. 
That's a little bit of a red flag, but this is a new feature at Drupal.org. Not everyone has said it. I know it's a stable module. I'm not going to worry too much about it. The next thing is we see the usage of this module. And these are the number of sites that are reporting using this module. The one thing you do have to do, though, is look at this number compared to other modules because an absolute number is not going to mean a whole lot. The other number we have that's pretty useful is that we can look at the historical usage statistics. And if I scroll down, I can see that this module is growing in popularity. So again, that's a pretty good sign. One of the other telltale signs of a quality module is its issue queue. Drupal.org is actually a large project management system where people can submit issues and bugs on various different modules, and they show up in the issue queue. So a lot of times seeing the number of issues and the types of issues can tell you a lot about the stability of a particular module. So now that I've seen enough, I've decided I want to download the Backup and Migrate module. To do that, I need to move it over to my site installation. So I'm going to go to the Downloads area and click on Copy Link Location. I'm going to run back to my website, scroll up to the top of the Modules area, and click on this Install New Module. I simply paste my URL in here and click Install. This is something actually new with Drupal 7, that we don't physically have to do administrative things like FTP or SSH to move files. The site can do it itself. To see our new module, we want to go back to the Module page. Click on Administration Pages. I want to click the Home to reset the site. And then I click again on Modules. And now I can scroll down, and we'll find the Backup and Migrate module here at the bottom. To enable, I simply click this checkbox, Save and Configure. If I want to use my new functionality, I simply go to Configuration, and here I've got a new option, and I click on the Backup and Migrate. And now I come to an admin where I can back up my database and store things as I need to. Now let's look at installing themes. To manage themes, we go to the Appearance link underneath our toolbar. And here we come to a page that's actually very similar to our Modules page, and that allows us to enable and disable various themes. This one, though, is much more visually oriented, though, because we want to look at what it is we're enabling. We'll see that Core gives us two themes that are enabled by default, Bartik and Seven. When we scroll down, we'll see that there's actually two other themes that are currently disabled. We could enable them and start using them, but we really don't want to work with core themes. Let's go ahead and download something from Drupal.org. To start our search for themes, we go to Download and Extend, and this time we're going to click on the Themes tab. One thing I do want to do is I want to filter for only Drupal 7 compatible themes. So I'm going to go ahead and select this and do a search. Now we get our list of various different themes ordered by usage. And I can use these thumbnails to help me find something that I might like. One thing I should note, though, is there are two types of themes. Full standard themes, these are the types you want to use, and base themes. Base themes are really used by web designers to help them create custom themes. They're not really going to give you what you want as far as doing it on an end-user website. I'm going to scroll down to a theme that I really like, Marinelli. To install this, I'm just going to scroll down and copy this link. I'm going to run back to my website and go to Install New Theme. Paste my link in here and now click Install. Now that our files are installed, let's go ahead and enable our theme. So I click on Administration Pages, reset the site, and click Appearance. When we scroll down, we now see that our new theme is down here, but it's not enabled. We just simply click this to enable it. And now I'm going to close the overlay. The site refreshes. And we now have a completely new theme on our site. Really pretty neat. The cool thing is we actually can keep going back to Drupal.org and installing as many themes as we want and kind of playing around with them till we find something that we like. The last thing we want to go over is keeping your site code up to date. Periodically, modules and themes have new releases. Even new versions of Core are released every now and then. New versions might have new features, bug fixes, or security patches, which are pretty critical to update. Fortunately, Drupal gives you tools to help keep your code up to the latest stable version. If we want to check if anything needs updated, we can go to Reports and then click on Available Updates. This report shows us the status of Core and any other modules or themes that we may have enabled. Items in green are up to date. Otherwise, we're not on the latest recommended releases. 
Now I've gone ahead and intentionally installed an older version of the link module, and we can see it's highlighted in yellow, letting us know that a new version is available. If we had any modules that needed a critical security patch update, those items would be highlighted in red. Luckily Drupal 7 gives us some tools to help us keep these modules up to date. Simply scroll to the top of this report and click on the Update tab. Now it's going to give us a list of any modules that need updating. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the link module and then click Download these updates. So now the new version has been transferred over to our local installation. But there is one last step. We need to update our database for whatever types of new data that particular module needs. One of the things that Drupal is recommending is that we put our site into maintenance mode, which is going to temporarily put up a maintenance page on our site, but it's going to protect our database, so it's something we should do. You might want to do your updates in the middle of the night or at some low traffic time just to help kind of deal with that. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. It's now put us in maintenance mode. Now I'm going to run our database updates. And now we're done. So now I'm going to run back to our administration side. And we run back to our report for available updates. And we see that our module has been updated. When you're first starting out with Drupal, much of your time will be spent experimenting with modules. There's some great ones out there that are well worth the exploration. When I got started, I found it very helpful to set up several sandboxes and regularly save backup points as I went along. Using the damp stack on your local computer with the Backup and Migrate module is a great setup for exploring the power of Drupal modules.